Hey everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel, uh, the Vector Vest YouTube channel. My name is Glenn Tompkins. This is the place where we keep you informed and help you to grow your portfolio. Today, I've got another good video in regards to what's going on through a technical phenomenon known right now as the death cross. So if you want to learn more about what it is and how to trade it right now, you sit right there. Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here on our VectorVest YouTube channel. Always love bringing these videos to your attention, hopefully to bring some new insight into some stocks or to what's going on in the market right now. And there's a bevy of things going on in the market right now. Before we get started, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted to when new videos like this come out. And most of all, if it was worth your time to stop by and watch us today, hit that like button and put some comments. Let me hear what you've got to say about what I'm talking about today. So today is all about the death cross. It is a technical, uh, two moving averages, a 50 and a 200 day uh, simple moving average to denote when the market is either looking well in a, for a death cross, when the market is, is anticipating a big move to the downside or sell off, and then to the other side, a golden cross when the market's looking to take off and start to move higher. But in this case, in the times that we're in right now, we're looking at the major indices coming up on a death cross across the board. So what does that mean? Well, you know, let's start off right there. What does it mean? It means, and I went out to Investopedia to get a textbook uh, definition of what it is. What is the death cross? It's a technical chart part pattern indicating the potential for a major sell-off. And that's the key thing, sell-off. Now, the other side of that is how long is that sell-off going to be? How deep is it going to be? How bad is it going to be. It doesn't tell you that. It just tells you of a potential major sell-off. The death cross appears on a chart when a stock's short-term moving average crosses below its long-term moving average. And the most common that you use for this scenario of the death cross or the golden cross is the 50 and 200 day moving averages. Key takeaways. The death cross is a technical chart pattern indicating the potential for a major sell-off and has been proven to be reliable, predictable and some of the for some of the most uh, severe bear markets 1929 1938 1974 2008 and then I'm also going to add in here 2020 as well the death cross appears on a chart when a stock's short term moving average usually the 50 day crosses below the long term moving average usually 200. Now, the death cross can be uh, contrasted with the golden cross, indicating a bull price movement as well. So this is something that is being talked about right now because it has happened across the board in all of the major indices. So let's do this. Let's get into the VectorVest software and let's talk about that. And I'm going to look at four indicators here and I will take my face off of this so we can concentrate. I'm going to look at our indicator, the VVC, the Vector Vest Composite, which tracks the movement of over 9,000 stocks, and we feel that it is a better representation of the broad market move. We're also going to look at the NASDAQ, uh, which are the tech stocks. We're going to look at the S&P 500, which is the benchmark that most people use for tracking their portfolios, and of course, the Dow. So we're going to start with the VVC, and I'm looking at a five-year graph, looking at end of day, and you can see how many times it's happened. Back in 2018, here was the death cross that occurred round about 11 12 of 2018 the bottom of the market happened on 12 26 that was a great time uh, to be out of the market and not take advantage or not get your portfolio slammed during this time we went back this was the golden cross where the 50 went above the 200 stayed that way now there's going to be something very interesting about uh the covid uh gold uh uh cross to the downside. Why? Because look how 
quickly it happened. And by time the 50 crossed below the 200, the market had already started to rebound. That was a very fast fall, but look at this fall, not nearly as fast. And let's look at the most current fall right now, also not nearly as fast. Now, something else you'll also notice that when you're looking at our vector vest composite and putting on our slowest, most conservative market timing call, prior to every death cross, the vector vest system had you out of the market. Here on 10 4th, 2018, prior to the death cross, we had you out. Here, even during COVID, even before COVID's uh, deaths um, cross happened, we had you out of the market early there. And even most recently, uh, the vector vest software had you out of the market on 11 22 of 2021. So I wanted to bring that to your attention in the swiftness, in the harshness of the move, by time the 50 went below the 200, the market had already started to rebound. But look at here, look at here, it's not nearly as quick as the move uh, that happened here. All right, so that's on the VVC. Let's go to the next one, which is the S&P 500. Uh, back in 2018, uh, the cross happened at about 12.11 of 2018. We still had another month of the market moving down. And look at this also, prior to the cross, the market already moves down, but these are slower moving averages. It takes a lot longer for these to cross before the market then comes up. Now, because this is such a slow moving cross uh, the market uh, a lot of people say well it's already happened the market's going to rebound but not here it didn't happen we still had another month again going back to 2020 uh, the big move in uh, cope because of COVID, not nearly as fast, and it couldn't have gotten you out fast enough. And look at right here, the S and P 500 just crossed uh, the death cross yesterday. All right, let's bring it up uh, to the next one, which is the Dow. Uh, the Dow again going through each and every one. Uh, 2020 and currently right now, just a couple of days ago. And of course, the last one, which is the Q's. Here's the cross. Here's, and you know, the Q's really didn't cross and stay crossed back in COVID very long, but look at this now happening. So this is the reason why this is so important to talk about right now is because it is a major phenomenon that people do look at. And now that you know that it's happened across the board, why is this important as well? Because we know that inflation is an issue. We know that there's a war going on in Ukraine by Russia. We know that interest rates are starting to go up starting tomorrow. Um, so we've got a perfect storm brewing for the market to continue to move lower. So now let's take a step back. Here's all the doom and gloom. I'm not here to bring you the doom and gloom. I'm just here to show you the facts and show you the numbers and what's going on. How do you as an investor take advantage of this to protect your portfolio the best way that you can? Well, there's a couple of things. If you're in a 401 or in some kind of a retirement, uh, you probably want to move your money over into as much cash as you can or bonds. There's somewhere along those lines. You probably want to be out of the NASDAQ and those kinds of stocks currently while the death cross is going on. How do you know when it's over? Well, we've got indicators within the vector vest system designed to show you when the market is starting to look for a bottom and what to look for as the market comes out of the doldrums of going down. What else can you do? Well, if you play options, this is a great time to sell calls on your long-term stocks, buy protective puts on those long-term stocks, or overall just buy puts on stocks that are going down. Um, what's another way? Let's take a look at contra ETFs. And the last way, which we're going to start off with right now, is dividend paying stocks. Because as stocks go down in price depreciation, hopefully the dividend will help to offset some of that price depreciation as you hold some of these stocks uh, longer term. Now, what, I'm, what I put together for you is something that we call uh, long-term dividends, dividend aristocrats, stocks that continually grow their dividends year after year for 25 plus 
years. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go into the viewers tab. And here's, I've got a watch list of stocks here called Death Cross Dividend. And these are some of the best dividend paying stocks, some of the best that got great yields and have the ability to either maintain or grow their dividends. And that is passive income for those of you who are newer to the stock market. You own these stocks and in a downtrending market, understand that the trend of the market affects about 80% of the stocks in the market. So even some of the best stocks in the database or in the market will tend to go down during this time. But the passive income of taking the dividend, a company will pay you money, a special dividend for being an owner of that company. And hopefully it will soften the blow of the price depreciation while the stock is going down. Now, there's certain things that you need to look for when considering dividend paying stocks. So first thing I want you to see that for the most part, these stocks are undervalued. And that's hard to come by right now with so much money in the market pushing stocks prices higher that you're going to come across good companies that are undervalued. Let's start with Nucor in the steel industry. Ah, oh, before I do that, let me show you some of the diversification behind this watch list of stocks. I'm going to slide all the way over to the right. And this is what I really like. Not only do they pay dividends, not only are they optionable, but this is diversified. I'm looking at a steel stock, a petroleum stock, diversified companies, apparel, food. That's important because during a market's pullback, some companies will go down more than other companies or some industries may, get, may be getting hit harder than others. I'd rather you have your money spread out and diversified across a different levels of things to take a look at. All right, so that was the first thing I liked about this list. Secondly, out of the five stocks that I'm looking at right here, Nucor, Exxon, Raytheon, Waze, and Coca-Cola, um, the majority of them are undervalued. Nucor, currently undervalued, trading at 113, a value of, 70, of 171. Exxon, trading at 81 with a value of 102. Now, look at Raytheon. I like this space, though, because this is an aerospace uh, and defense uh, space. I still like this space, but this stock is currently overvalued. Uh, when I look at Waco Group, 23 with a value of 31, undervalued, and Coca-Cola. Now, this is a classic company that's been around, and this uh, is a no-brainer why it's on the list. It's Coca-Cola, but it is currently overvalued. But Next thing I like about these stocks, these stocks all have relative values above one. These stocks have high potential to outperform the market even when the market is moving down. Now, as the market goes down and these stocks do go down, that relative value will decrease, but you want to make sure that it tries to stay above the value of one, all right? Relative safety, not all of these companies are nearly as safe as I'd like them to be, but they do have the upside potential with relative value. Relative timing shows me that three of these stocks are in uptrends and two of them are not. Uh, overall, our master indicator VST tells me that these are good stocks. Three of them are buy recommendations and two of them are holds. Notice that all of them do have positive earnings and they grow their earnings at a double digit clip. That's also important when I'm investing in a stock and trying to hold it during a, a potential pullback in the market. Now, overall, in a downturn in the market, if you're holding stocks long, you better be holding on stocks that you don't mind holding. And these are stocks that I don't think you would mind holding uh, based upon the analytics on these stocks. Now, let's talk about some of the dividend analysis that you'll only find in the VectorVest software. First off, dividend yield. Well, a good average yield is sitting about somewhere between two and four. I tried to find stocks that for you that had that kind of range. Nucor was the only one that had a dividend at one and a half, but you know something? That's all right. The rest of them are, you know, with the exception of RTX, are three to four. That's good. Always remember, don't get caught chasing dividend yield. Now, to keep me from chasing dividend yield, I've got an indicator in the VectorVest system called dividend safety. The stock's ability to maintain or grow their current dividend. It's cast on a scale between zero and 99. Above 50 tells me that the dividend that you see on these stocks are safe. And the only one that's on the cusp are of the two is Coca-Cola and Waco at 50 and 51. Nucor is going to blow that stuff right out the door. Now, talking about dividend yield, 
Now, let's go see if the stocks have the ability to maintain that dividend yield by earning enough money to cover the dividend. So the dividend yield, I want the earnings yield to be higher than the dividend yield to help me to know that the company has the ability to make the money to cover the dividend. And notice that every single one of these dividend yields are higher than the, uh, every one of these earnings yields are higher than the dividend yields, which helps me to feel more comfortable that the dividend that's being paid is a good dividend that should hold up. All right. So those are the things that I want you to look at when in, in regards to dividend paying stocks. Let's go highlight these stocks real quick. It's five of them. We'll view the stock graph, all right? And now, let's go put this on a three-month graph. Bottom left, top right, a little bit of volatility on Nucor right now. I'm going to put this back on to a different layout. Let's go put this on my swing trade layout, where I am looking at a 20-day moving average of the stock, clearly still above it, even though it's pulling back, but still above. This concerns me a little bit. Look at the earnings is falling, still uh, above the value of zero, which means they are making money, but the money making is starting to slow off a little bit. And hopefully, even with that, let's go put on the dividend. If I haven't already, doesn't look like I did. I can click on add uh, parameter dividend. Let's go look at the dividend, put that on. The dividend is just flat right now. So they haven't changed in dividend. It's sitting at $2. That's not bad. All right, let's go to the next stock. Now, the next stock is ExxonMobil. This also catches my attention that the stock's price is currently below the 20-day exponential moving average. Rising earnings, the dividend is flat right now as well. So with that, knowing that the dividend is there and the dividend is safe, hopefully it will offset uh, the pullback on the price. Now, keep in mind, at some point in time, you've got to make a determination. Is the dividend you're receiving worth the or worth more than the pullback in the stock. And if the dividend that you're receiving is not worth more than the pullback in the stock, you've got to cut ties, all right? Because now that's not a win-win situation. Hopefully that makes sense to you, all right? So knowing that it's below the 20, as long as the dividend is outpacing the price decline, I'm okay. When that changes, I get out. But I think I like that the earnings per share is rising here. Let's go to the next one. Raytheon pulled back, but look at that nicely still above the 20 day exponential moving average same thing going on with earnings falling a little bit but i do like that uh it is still positive nonetheless let's go to the next stock uh ways now this one is a little bit of a sideways move hasn't become a sell over the last three months currently below the 30 day weighted moving average but starting uh sorry the 20 day uh um, moving average right here, but starting to move back up along with earnings. Keep that in mind. And the last one is Coca-Cola. I uh, pulled back below the 20, now starting to rise again. Uh, look at the dividend is starting to rise here. Earnings looks good. So uh, these stocks, I think, are potential candidates to keep on your watch list. Now, there's another way to play this space as well. If the market is potentially poised to move down, the next other place to go is if you don't want to hone in on a specific stock is to look at contra ETFs. So I put together some contras for you to take a look at. Um, and here they are. Biotech, LABD. Let's go stream that. LABD. Uh, today is down as the market is moving up. But look at the relative timings on these. From a contra ETF standpoint, this is what's important to me. What's moving higher? Uh, Yang, uh, and looking at China, looking at uh, the FANG stocks. Normally, when the market goes down, people get a little tepid about the FANG stocks. This is the bearish side of the FANG stocks. Uh, the, of course, the NASDAQ and looking at the SOX as well. Let's graph these all real quick. Now, this is, is the market 
Look at that, man, as the market is going down, these are gonna go up above the 20 day. Now earnings and dividends are not gonna play a role here. I'm strictly looking at price action. There's Yang, there's LABD in a little bit of a channel, but still above the 20 day. Wow, look at the FANG stocks, the bearish ETF for them. And it's a three times short, so be careful with that. And the, uh, the, the NASDAQ, look at it moving higher. And the SOX side sitting in a little bit a channel, but still above the 20 day. So two different ways to play the death cross if the market is poised to move so lower, right? So you're still looking at the things that are making the market do what it's doing enough to make it so that all of the major indices are now exhibiting the death cross. So by way of inflation being what it is, interest rates about to rise, the war going on, all of these are the perfect storm, the the rest recipe for a possible major sell-off in the market. But again, I don't know for how long and how deep, but the death cross is there. So with that, folks, take it as it is. Remember, we try to do the work so that you can reap the rewards. If you have comments about what I've talked about, put them in the comments. If you have stocks that you would like for me to analyze and put into a video for you, put those stocks in the comments for me as well, and I will do another viewer's choice video. With that, folks, this video is over. And until the next time, see ya.